Hello everybody. So as Jade says, I'm Ilona from Elevate. But before we talk about Elevate, I want to take you back to probably what wasn't a great time in all of your lives. So apologies in advance for that, because I want you to cast your minds back about two years to March 2020. This new virus was going around the world. We'd just been announced that we were going into lockdown and we had no idea how long that was going to be for, or what was going to happen and what world would come back into. And I'm sure many of you at that time had concerns about where you're going to catch this virus, what was going to happen to your relatives, where you're going to have to juggle homeschooling, what impact might that have on your children? How are we going to cope being stuck in our houses for such a long period of time? I had many of those concerns myself and also had a big professional concern. My role at the time was in an events-led business development organisation. My job was to bring together huge groups of people who don't know each other and put them in an enclosed space. In other words, a role that might as well have been sponsored by COVID. There was no way that that organisation was going to be able to continue as normal going into a pandemic. We worked from home for a short period of time and then myself and my colleague Katie were placed on furlough. And I'm not going to lie, some bits of furlough were delightful. It was a hot sunny summer, I could do yoga in the garden whilst my poor husband was shut away in an office for 12 hours at a time on back-to-back -back Teams calls. But there were also some really dark days in that. I hadn't realised pre-pandemic how much of my self-worth, how much of my personality relied on what I did for a living. I'm a natural extrovert. I get my energy from being surrounded by other people. And suddenly I was spending 90% of my waking hours with my cat. And she's adorable, but she has zero chat. It's not a great place for an extrovert to be. It made me much more reflective than I've been before. And it meant that when that meeting came that we kind of expected, saying that Katie and I were going to get made redundant, that it led me to this bit of being, what am I going to do next? Are the jobs that I love even going to exist? What is it that we're going to do? So I did what everybody would do in this situation. I found a hilarious meme and I dropped it into a WhatsApp chat with Katie and one of my other colleagues. And that meme is a dog at a laptop, world on fire around it, and the caption, me job hunting in a pandemic. And what I received back is probably the best WhatsApp message I've ever received. What if there's something we can do together? That message from Katie instantly made me happier. It lit a fire inside me because out of everything I wasn't sure of, I knew that I was sure that I wasn't ready to stop working with Katie. And I don't think I ever will be, Katie. I think you're stuck with me now. Uh, we started those conversations. What was it that we could do together? What kind of business did we want to build? What kind of business was the world going to need coming out of a pandemic? So she came round to my house and we had a socially distanced post-up session, staying two metres apart at all times, pre-packed lunch for the middle so we weren't any cross-contamination. And we started thinking about what kind of business we wanted to build. And what we found very quickly is this was very, very fluffy. We weren't talking about commercial targets. We haven't ever had a business plan. We didn't know what the revenue model was going to be. What we knew was we wanted to work for nice people doing lovely things. And that was great and it made us feel very warm and very fuzzy. But also perhaps like what we didn't have was a business model, was more of a hobby, more of a passion project. And then I read a book called Grow the Pie. If you've not read it yet, I highly recommend it um, by a man called Alex Edmonds. And he talks about this idea of balancing profits and purpose. The conventional wisdom is that one competes against the other. You can either make lots of money or you can do lots of good in the world. If you're a business that wants to do both, you need to look after the profits first. You need to build up that bottom line, have cash to spare, and then start doing nice things for other people and giving back to your community. Grow the pie flips that mindset. It talks about not splitting a fixed pie between all your different stakeholders. It talks about focusing on purpose to grow the pie. So you'll become more commercially successful and do more good for the world. 
And it's been shown time and time again that those organisations that focus on their purpose, that focus on adding value, are also more commercially successful. And out of that, our mantra was born. We believe that business can and should be a force for good. And that has run through everything Elevate has done since. But going back to those initial days pre-launch, we felt like we should probably have a target list. That target list was essentially Bruntwood Works written on a piece of paper. They were an organisation that we'd been involved with quite a lot in our previous roles, and in Katie's case, right back to her days in hospitality. We loved the ethos of the company, and we'd seen over the pandemic what difference having a purpose-driven mission statement made to that organisation. As a property company in a pandemic, they could have just closed their doors. They could have forgotten about everything else and bunkered down until things were over. But as we've heard from Chris this morning, that didn't happen. They focused more on sustainability. They focused more on designing beautiful spaces like Block that we're in now. They focused on supporting the community. And one of the things they did was to launch the Spark programme. At the time, a free online programme where they could both showcase customers and support other customers within their network. So with that very brief little target list and this feeling that we were going to go on and do some good, we decided it was time to launch the business, middle of September 2020, on what also happened to be my birthday. So we had our posts ready to go on LinkedIn. We're going to tell the world what we're doing. We expected there might be a little bit of a buzz around it when we did this. So as you do, popped it on LinkedIn, got into the car for my husband to take me for a day out at the zoo. Because I might be nearing 40, but a day out at the zoo is still my ultimate birthday treat. And then LinkedIn went wild. I spent huge chunks of that day perched next to a penguin pool, answering all of these messages of support, these offers to help, questions about what we were doing, and that outpouring from the business community reinforced that we were doing the right thing and that we couldn't now let all of these people down, that we had to build the business we promised and we had to do it in the right way. And then, what I still can't quite believe, Within a couple of weeks of launch, we signed Brentwood Works as our very first customer. As a name delivery partner for a peer networks programme and also to support the Spark programme. So many of those themes that you saw on, on Chris's lovely side earlier, I can tell you are actually what happens in place. They said to us right from the beginning, we don't just want to be an office, we want to be a partner for growth. And it is no exaggeration to say that without Bruntwood Works, Elevate would not be Elevate. They've supported us on that journey and are still a constant inspiration. They've also set the blueprint as to what a good client looks like. This is now the bar to which everybody else is held. The people that we want to work with are the ones that exceed in these areas, that are great people to work with for businesses doing brilliant things. We started then to grow the business and had to find a way of articulating in a better way what exactly Elevate was about. What are our key pillars on which the business is built? So our three key pillars, and you will recognise many of these themes today, sustainability, innovation and community. What you will also spot on this slide is one of the proudest moments of Elevate when we got to bring the lovely Catherine into the team with us as well. On sustainability, we were approached early on by the Carbon Literacy Project to start training carbon literacy. In February 2021, we became the world's first carbon literate business development organisation. Since then, we've taken around 40 other organisations through that programme, including taking Avis and Young to being the first carbon literate organisation in their sector. Pledges internally within Elevate include things like active travel and public transport where possible, plant-based as standard at all of our events. Having that passion for sustainability has also helped us to win clients like Electricity Northwest with their mission statement to lead the Northwest to net zero. They've got us involved in residential project developments. We've recently won NSPEC Power as they look to expand from being known as electrical engineers to moving into the sustainability consultancy space. In terms of innovation, this wasn't something we ever thought we were going to have to be. 
as with so many of you might have done in September 2020 setting up, we thought we were going to be back to normal by Christmas. We thought come January 21, we'd be back out doing live events. We did not think we would be a primarily online business, but we were, and we are still are at this stage. It meant that we were